in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we welcome you to this Mass offered from the Holy Angels Chapel of the Diocesan Center for the Diocese of Las Vegas. We remember you as we offer this Mass, especially those who are watching and assisting from your homes. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. 
My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you, my flesh pines, and my soul thirsts like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, for your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you. You are my help and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los tesalonicenses. Hermanos, no queremos que ignoren lo que pasa con los difuntos, para que no vivan tristes como los que no tienen esperanza. Pues, si creemos que Jesús murió y resucitó de igual manera, debemos creer que los que murieron en Jesús, Dios los llevará con él. Lo que les decimos como la palabra del Señor es esto, que nosotros, los que quedemos vi vivos para cuando venga el Señor, no tendremos ninguna ventaja sobre, sobre los que ya murieron. Cuando Dios mande que suenen las trompetas, se oirá la voz de un arcángel, y el Señor mismo bajará del cielo. Entonces, los que murieron en Cristo resucitarán primero. Después nosotros, los que quedemos vivos, seremos arrebatados juntamente con ellos entre nubes, por el aire, para ir al encuentro del Señor. Y así estaremos siempre con Él. Consuélense, pues, unos a otros con estas palabras. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Aleluya, aleluya. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Stay awake, you know not the day nor the hour. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. 
Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil for their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. He said in reply, Amen to you, I say, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. We are in the last weeks of the liturgical year, the 32nd Sunday. And then the 33rd, and finally, the solemnity of Christ, the King of the universe. And these last weeks always bring us to a meditation on the last things. Death, judgment, heaven, hell. We've already celebrated All Saints Day last Sunday, meditating on the, the church triumphant and rejoicing with the saints in glory. And we have celebrated this past week, All Souls Day, praying for the church suffering, the souls in purgatory. We're in the novena for the holy souls. Uh, let us remember the faithful departed as we offer this holy mass. And here, today, we are given this beautiful gospel parable, albeit a sobering one, for our meditation today, for our food for prayer. The parable of the ten virgins, the wise and the foolish virgins. And these wise and foolish virgins who are awaiting the bridegroom's arrival teach us many things as we, the church, the bride, wait on Christ the groom. First, they teach us that there are some things that we cannot have others do for us. Isn't that true? We simply have to do them ourselves. The wise virgins, not sharing their lamp oil, are not being selfish. They are being prudent and practical. If they shared and the groom were further delayed, they could have all ended up in darkness and in danger. Second, they teach us that we have to be prepared, awake, the gospel cries, alert. Why? Because life is uncertain. Death can come at any moment. Think of a, of a fatal car accident which we see on the roadway or an accident or a fall at home. And who would have predicted this pandemic? I think we may have become 
so smitten by medical progress that we began to think and to live as if we were past the age of pandemics or, or similar health crises, and we are not. Man is not the measure of all things. God is. And it's not just the particular judgment at the hour of death for which we have to be prepared. No, it's also the, the general judgment and the second coming and the glorious coming of Christ when the bridegroom comes, not as an infant in humility, but in glory as king of the universe. Do we know that day? No. What does the gospel say? We know, you know, neither the day nor the hour. Now, many have tried to predict that day and hour and read scriptural signs in our times, but rather than look around, the church always counsels us, good mother that she is, to look within. How do we wait for Christ? Whether in the particular judgment at the hour of death or in the gen general judgment in his coming in glory, we wait for him in all humility. We're not called so much to be wise, but humble virgins. Humility opens us up to be receptive to all the gifts that the Lord wishes to pour into our lamps and pour into our flasks. One saintly spiritual writer wrote, really humble people are never scandalized. They know their own weaknesses too well. We have no reason to despise anyone. A humble person sees only his own faults. It's a sign of little virtue to notice the imperfections in others. A person may be imperfect today who in a little while, recognizing this, may rise to great sanctity. May we, dear brothers and sisters, recognizing the paucity of oil that we sometimes fail to carry in our own lamps, open our hearts this day to the Lord's love. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heeding our call in the Lord to be vigilant, we offer now our prayers. For the church, that she may await the day of the Lord with prayerful hearts and the prudence of the wise virgins, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we exercise responsibility for our formation in the faith and the faith of our families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in this time of pandemic, we may heed the invitation to a deeper prayer and turn to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in humility, we may allow the Lord to fill our flasks and lamps with his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That these days in the church year may be an opportune time to be more closely united with the holy souls in purgatory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers. If these be offered in accord with your holy will and for our eternal salvation, we ask that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of grace. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before the final blessing of this Mass, I wish to thank all those who assisted in bringing this Mass to you, to your families, and to your homes. Deacon Tim O'Callaghan with Diocesan Social Ministry and Deacon of St. Andrew Parish in Boulder City, Nevada. Connie Clough, the Director of Faith Formation in the Diocese of Las Vegas. Clara Martinez uh, with uh, Confirmation Ministry and Youth Ministry at St. Thomas More Parish in Henderson, Nevada and of course, Jeff, for recording and taping and bringing this Mass to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.